Welcome to TED In Your Head, the 10-minute podcast created exclusively to help you eliminate bad habits and success-limiting fears and beliefs so that you too can win at life and business. Your host is Ted Moreno, certified hypnotherapist and high-performance coach. On this show, we tackle the trash and talk some truth to transform your mind. Let's check it out and welcome your host, Ted Moreno. Hello, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning in to another episode of the Ted in Your Head podcast. I'm your host, Ted Moreno, certified hypnotherapist, high performance coach, and I work with people that have challenges such as anxiety, fear, procrastination, nail biting, smoking, uh, stomach, digestive problems. These are all the things that respond very well to hypnosis. And there's nothing weird about hypnosis. Hypnosis is a natural state that we all go into pretty much on a daily basis. If you're interested in hypnotherapy for any of the problems that I cited, I'll tell you how to get in touch with me later on. But for now, we're going to get right into today's show, the topic, how to stop living in the past, how to stop living in the past. Now, if you live in the past and you are overjoyed by how wonderful your life is and how uh, some incredibly wonderful things happen to you and you're just fondly remembering the past, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the situation where you can't let go of the negativity of the past or you can't let go of the sorrow or the trauma or the negative thoughts, feelings, or emotions of the past. So living in the past and unable to get free from it, that's what I'm talking about. And there are many reasons why people get stuck or attached to the past. Maybe they had a terrible loss in the form of a breakup or divorce or the loss of a loved one that was sick for a long time. Or maybe there was a terrible period of their life where they got sick or had an accident and spent a long time, uh, you know, uh, uh, healing uh, with the fear of, you know, not getting better or not healing completely. So there's many, many examples of these things that can happen that create trauma. And then, you know, we spend the next few years trying to be free from it with memories and thoughts and feelings of the past. It's a very real problem for many, many people. So we're going to talk about a few ways to free yourself from the past if you have any of these things going on. And really, the first step is always to be clear about what you want, which is the intention to let it go. So you have to actually articulate to yourself and others, I want to be free from the negative thoughts, feelings, and emotions about this thing that happened in the past. You have to have the intention to let it go. And sometimes it's hard, you know, if you got, uh, if, if, if you got, broken up or dumped, or if your loved one left you in a divorce relationship type of thing, and you're still kind of ruminating your mind, why, why did they do that? Why did that have to happen? Um, Obviously, sometimes it's hard to get an answer for those questions. Sometimes you'll never get an answer to those questions. So having the intention to tell yourself, you know, some things just happen and we don't understand why they happen, and I'll just have to let this go. It's easier said than done, but You have to start with the intention that you want to let the past go. And one of the great ways to do this is by using affirmations. I'm a big fan of affirmations. There's plenty of research to show that saying positive statements um, can be helpful. So if you can come up with some positive statements and say the same ones every day, you know, for maybe a month and then come up with some new ones, you know, each and every month, 30 days typically is what I suggest if you're going to do affirmations. You know, write them down so you say them the same way. You know, each and every day I'm free from the negativity and trauma and sorrow of the past and moving forward into into a more hopeful future. That'd be a great affirmation that you can tell yourself each and every day. Or tonight when I sleep, my mind will vent out and release the negativity of the past. That's another great affirmation. Saying these affirmations first thing in the morning And last thing at night, before you go to bed, will make them very, very effective. So that's one thing you can do is have the intention to let go of the past and use affirmations to reinforce that intention. Another thing is a little more practical. So, you know, get out of the situation. So if you 
see the person that broke up with you, you know, and that haunts you, then, you know, try to get out of that situation. I, I understand it may be easier said than done, but whatever you can to distance yourself from the environment. If it means moving to a new apartment, um, you know, that might be a good thing to do. If it means not going to the same coffee shop or restaurant we used to hang out, whatever you can do to change the associations uh, that you have this, this uh, trauma or sorrow or negativity with, you know, changing those associations can be very, very helpful. Um, so, you know, just a very basic thing, get out of the environment that triggers uh, the negativity of, of the past. Now, we have to acknowledge that when bad things happen to us, we're going to feel certain things. So we don't want to deny our need to feel stuff, to grieve, to acknowledge that we're wounded or hurt. Uh, if you get the feeling that, wow, it's been you know five years and I'm still hanging on to this, then yeah, that's that would be a time to begin to try to let that go. And one of the things you can do is acknowledge your feelings. Be very clear that you're still feeling pain or you're still feeling sorrow or you're still feeling trauma. And sometimes just letting yourself feel those feelings instead of pushing them down or repressing them, feeling them, giving them some presence, and then having, making the choice to let them go. Maybe when you feel them, you can write them down. This is what I'm feeling. Now, I don't need to feel this anymore. I don't want to feel this anymore. But a lot of times we let go of things by feeling them. We let go of most thoughts, emotions, and feelings by feeling them, by giving them voice and writing them down. And, you know, maybe a good cry is what we need. So, you know, the opposite of that would be repression. If you're repressing your thoughts and feelings, that's going to kind of keep them around a little bit longer. The idea of what you resist persists. So if you find that you're repressing uh, feelings or trauma, then let them come up, feel them forever long you need to, and then move on. Many people are afraid that their feelings are going to be too overwhelming or they're going to be damaged by their feelings. That, chances are that's not going to happen if you're a healthy and, and relatively mentally balanced person. So working through the emotions is a really good thing to do. And one of the things you can do that, one of the ways you can do that is by talking about it, seeking professional help, talking to a psychotherapist, talking to a hypnotherapist, talking to a priest, talking to somebody, getting it off your chest, feeling the emotions, crying with the support of somebody there with you. And it may not necessarily need to be a professional person. It may be somebody that you trust or somebody that you count on. But talking about it can definitely give you the opportunity to release the past. There's another thing you can do called a reframe, okay? Acknowledging that you can control what you make things mean. So very often, what can be very powerful is to look back at this thing that happened, the, the, the thing that's keeping you stuck in the past, and ask yourself, what did I learn from this? And even creating a narrative, the, the reason this happened to me is so that I could learn this, so that I could be more that, so I could understand this about myself. So reframing that situation as a positive or a gift Reframing it in a more positive light can be very, very powerful. And this is something that I've done myself to a number of kind of very challenging times through my life. I was able to look back at some point and say, you know, if, I, if that hadn't happened, then I wouldn't have gotten this, or I wouldn't have been led to seek out this other thing which has been so valuable in my life, namely my own personal self-development. So looking at the thing in the past and seeing it as a gift or something positive for you today. Ritual can be very, very powerful. We are people that are rooted in ritual as human beings, yet many of the rituals that we have uh, have been lost. So the ritual of maybe going to church or temple or, or mosque, you know, on a regular basis, getting back in touch with your faith or religion can be very, very helpful. And I think this is probably the first place that people turn 
But there's other rituals that you can create. You know, the ritual of writing a letter to the person that's hurt you or to the person that you've lost, writing a long letter, you know, saying what you need to say to them, and then burning it. Or finding objects that represent this tough time in your life and putting those objects in a box and then burying them. Or, you know, sending them off to sea, right? Putting those things, burying them at sea. This is a very powerful uh, ritual. I myself have done a lot of these rituals where I, I've burned stuff for the purpose of letting it go. So don't underestimate the power of a uh, ritual. One of the rituals that some of my clients tell me is that um, if they are having problem letting go of somebody, they'll put up a photo of that person. They'll, they'll have a conversation with that person every day. They'll just talk to them for a certain amount of time until they don't feel the need to do that anymore. And then they'll, they'll put the photo away or they'll put it in a different place. So ritual is important. And then finally, forgiveness. Forgiveness is just so powerful as a way of letting go of the past. That forgiveness might mean forgiving yourself, which is the first step, right? Self-forgiveness. It might mean forgiving others or forgiving a situation. So oftentimes, the reason we live in the past is because we resent, we're resentful. We feel it should have been different. We feel tr- we were treated unfair or we weren't given the proper amount of justice or there was no justice. So forgiveness, it takes some time. It's not easy to do. And it doesn't mean that we excuse the behavior of whoever hurt us, or it doesn't mean that we excuse the behavior of the system or the business or whatever. It simply means that we don't want to be bound anymore. And maybe forgiveness is not the right thing to do. That's up to you. But forgiveness can be a powerful way of healing and letting go of the past. Okay? So there's some things that you can do. Affirmations. Get away from the situation. Feel what you need to feel, but don't identify with what you're feeling. I forget that little piece about feeling what you need to feel. Don't make it a, a story that you tell every time you have somebody to listen to story of how you were hurt, because then you're just reinforcing that, right? So that goes hand in hand with the intention of letting it go. Don't make that part of your, um, of the story that takes place above all other stories. All right. So just, uh, you know, to give, uh, some, some credit, I, I went on TonyRobbins.com to get some of this information. I also checked out an article on Healthline. Okay. To, to, to come up with some of the ideas for this podcast. So there you go. That concludes today's show. If you want to get in touch with me for a free half-hour phone consultation, go to tedmoreno.com. If you want to see previous episodes of my podcast, tedinyourhead.com. And uh, I'm on social media, say hello. I'll leave you with a quote by none other than Will Rogers, who said, don't let yesterday take up too much of today. Very appropriate quote for our subject. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast and I look forward to joining you on future episodes. Take good care of yourself. Goodbye. Thank you for joining us on today's episode of Ted in Your Head. If your bad habits and limiting fears and beliefs prevent you from achieving the success you want, it's time to take out the trash, talk some truth, and transform your mind. To learn more about how Ted can personally help you win at life and business, visit www.tedmoreno.com. That's www.tedmoreno.com. Thanks to Dimitri Rosti and Isaac Taylor for their help in producing this podcast. See you next time on the Ted in Your Head podcast.